Hello, hello. Welcome to another Blender tutorial with that revolves around the Westwood 3D plugin for it, just like all my other Blender tutorials do. I'm Kyle Perkino, and today this is just, just going to be a general guidance video as to like the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts of Westwood 3D plugin. So, so. I'm going to start with the basics of how first the do's and don'ts of importing Westwood 3D. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that what you do want is to have, like what you do want is to be able to identify like that, which, uh, which skeleton file, indicated by these SKL bits, the uh, model you want to import into Blender uses. I'm just using Age of the Ring models, including my submod of Shadow in the East, but not limited to that as an example. So, like, let's say, for example, I wanted to import the model for... Da, 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 how about, let's go with... Let's go with Surf Archers, just as an example. So, if I wanted to import Surf Archers, I would have to make sure that I didn't just have the Surf model in the in the AOTR Art W3D MU directory. I would have to make sure I also had the appropriate skeleton for that, which in this thing's case, is named muheradim underscore skl. Where is that? Okay, you know what? What I'm going to show you is what happens when you don't have the correct skeleton in there. Like if I want to make a new surf thing and... Like if I wanted to make surf axemen out of surf archers and I went ahead and went ahead and imported the uh, surf skeleton the surf archer without the proper skeleton I would end up it would it would end up giving me a it would basically end up not importing a thing like at all so what you do is or you do is you make is you put the proper skeleton into the folder so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just that I'm going to uh, isn't she wonderful? That's my Kiki. Um, so what I'm going to do is go, in my case, the way I have things organized, you might have organized your stuff very, very differently. So just look at this as general guidance and not as like a, as not that specific a tutorial, okay? Going to go to games. In my, the way I have it organized, I would go here and I have folders where I keep the, skeletons and other are of vanilla battle for middle earth 2 you might not have that yourself but uh but it would help you a lot for modding and sub battle for middle earth modding and age during sub modding purposes if you did so let's see haradim skl that's the one i want go away please and then i x this out Oh wait, no. I have to hit Windows C. Duh. And then go to my submod directory since that's what I'm using as an example in this do's and don'ts video. Then boop! Just like that. And just like that, I have a new skeleton in there, huh? So close this out. We open this. And then this. Only, I imagine you won't be making video of your modding efforts. Or will you? I don't know, let me know in the comments. And I still have the same thing selected, but this time... So, yeah. How do you figure out which models use which skeletons, you may be asking? Beautiful question. So, so once again, in my case anyway, games, C submod directory, and then go data, INI, object, is your, is the faction the unit is in or that you're making a new counterpart for 
good faction or evil faction? Surf archers belong to evil faction, so I'm going to go evil faction. And since this is an Age of the Ring submod directory, units, rune, and then auxiliary, auxiliary archer. I can never get that word pronounced right. And here I have edit with notepad plus plus as an option. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to skip down a bit. And I'll see I have, it uses the Haradrim Archer Skeleton, which is the file name for which is M-U Haradim underscore S-K-L. That's just one example. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of them in just in Age of the Ring 8.3.1 with no submods alone. So, yeah, have fun with that. And what else? Oh, yes. Do, do. Me personally, I always like to just uh, turn off geometry so that all the lines will go away. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this isn't going to be another make a new unit out of an old one tutorial. I did that already. This is just a general guidance do's and don'ts of Westwood 3D plugin. Now I'm going to show you exporting. So. Here's what you do. File, new general, or at least what I do. And I'm going to show you I already have some uh, project files going on. And of these two, I think I'll pull up Eastwing Helmet 1. Yeah, this is basically supposed to be a Eastwing Hero Helmet. You'll notice I, uh, let's get the floor and the x-axis back. You'll notice I, uh, and it took the standard Easterling helmet from Age of the Ring, done by Matthias, by the done really good by Matthias, by the way, and edited it to have its own top of the helmet decorations. It's got horns. It's got this frame that I'm sure you've seen in Weta Workshop concept arts of like Easterling banners and such. And then this, the horns and frame, this plume, I call it. Made it myself, along with the nose-like piece and the mouth-like piece. What you want to do... Oh, and this is my reference image of choice. You'll see it's uh, from a... Uh, it's from a company called Reven Blocks. They basically make uh, Lego-compatible armor, weapons, and shields. And they give it... They give it generic names like like East Sea something to avoid getting copyright claimed or copyright striked. But yeah, anyway, on to what this is actually about. This is about exporting, is it not, my old friend? So what I do is I hover my cursor over to here, this window, and then I hit A. I want to make sure something is singled out, but still hey, so still select it all. And then what I do is save just to make sure I don't mess up anything. And then I go file, export, Westwood 3D. And then I go MU. And then since it's not attached to a skeleton, I leave the use existing skeleton checkbox alone. If it were using a skeleton, I would have to tick that box. And that skeleton would have to be in this folder for reasons I will get to in probably a different video. And I'm just going to type in like a typical Westwood 3D file name for the format. It's going to be MU. Given the character I made this helmet design or redesign for, it's going to be Jig on the Onyx Emperor on underscore helm like that. And then, boop, finished. Then what I do is I go see if it exported right, which means I go to games in my case, my submod directory, R, W3D, skip down to MU in this case. Lots of models have different places to skip down to. Let's be honest with ourselves and each other. And you want to keep the file size as tiny as possible. Like this is 67 kilobytes according to According to Windows File, is that called Files Explorer? Yeah, according to File Explorer. 
mesh g1 underscore helm and you'll notice it exported correctly exported as intended yeah and once again the helm the helmet that i used for a bedrock was mythized while the other one two three four pieces were yours truly yeah, so like 80% of this was custom made, and the 20% is this helmet mesh right here. Oh, and I edited the helmet mesh to make it so that the mouth and nose pieces and texture of them would be among the first things to grab your attention. So there's a little trick that you need to pay attention to and such. And uh, since this is not a uh, personal customs and redesigns video, I'm not going to go any further into the Onyx Emperor's personal helmet, really. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for uh, import-export. The import-export import, Westwood 3D and Blender, and that's basically just for models. There's obviously... Like, and like animations obviously require you to export the model with its skeleton first before you export the animation. And I'll prove that to you right now. So let's see. Let's go file import Westwood MU. And then let's pick a different example. Let's go with the Easterling Swordsman, these guys. And then what I want to do is say I want to import a uh, say I want to import a specific attack animation. I go import Westwood 3D and then go up CH. It's obviously not there, so what I do is I go to that little folder I keep that I keep for art from the base game. And go to CH, and then I go down to the animation I want to import, and looks a good attack animation. Not a bow one, obviously. Um, how about a, a U one, attack A. And then I want to see in Blender how the character acts out the animation. And as you can see, he's acting out the animation in the Blender window. So yeah, that's basically how you import an animation. Is you start by importing a model with its skeleton in the same folder with it. And then you import the animation you want to watch. So yeah, there's that. And... Uh, here are your takeaways from this video. I know this was a ludic another ludicrously short one, just like my uh, Omder video, but here are the takeaways. To import, a model skeleton must be in the same folder with the model for you to import into Blender correctly. That's one. Two, you figure out what skeleton it uses by looking into the code files, the INI code file. Three, it, successful import of animation requires you to import the the model with its skeleton first. Excuse me. Four. In order to export, you have to click on something within the within that window that lists the mini window that lists all the meshes. And last but not least. You have to, well, fifth and final takeaway is you have to, yeah, you have to just know what you're doing based on what you learned from this video. So it's really only four takeaways if I'm being honest with you. So yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, yeah, please be sure to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, hit the all alerts bell. Oh! And uh, I actually uh, decided to start a Patreon. There's a link for that in the comment box. If you want to, if you want to 
like if you want to support my efforts and fundraise for me to get better software, better hardware, better microphones for my voice acting, or if you just want me to be able to go to a, an art focused trade school for for this kind of like digital graphic stuff and for voice and or voice acting, then yeah, my Patreon is optional to give to. And the options are five dollars a month, and that's actually it, folks. When Patreon lets me start thirty bucks a year for that option. Fun stuff. Alright. Bye.